I bless you on this evening. I praise God for allowing me this opportunity to uh, be with you. Uh, truly, God is good. Praise God for uh, blessing me once again to uh, be with you in our weekly Bible study. Uh, the Lord has allowed me and given me one more time to come and be with you and those who uh, share with us in uh, the study of the word of the Lord. And I praise God for that. If you're out there, let me know that you're out there. You that are listening. Uh, I want to just, first of all, thank God that he has given me this opportunity. I was out for a while, a good while, uh, because of uh, sickness. But the Lord has raised me up and brought me back again. And I praise God for that. I praise God for him bringing me back and giving me the strength to continue. God is a good God, and I know for myself that he is a healer. And uh, I just praise God for the victory that I have in Jesus Christ. Uh, during the time that I was absent, uh, I thank God for Ella Rachel Moten and Missionary Linda Ford who carried on our Bible studies, primarily on we uh, have our YPWW, which is Young, People, Young People's Willing Workers, on Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. However, because I was not able to uh, have the pastoral teaching on Friday night, uh, Missionary Ford and the, uh, the ministry team, audio video ministry team, uh, made sure that our Bible study would go on through the YPWW lessons. So I thank God for that. People who are diligent, who love the Lord, love God's church, want to see God's church go forward. As you see, I have uh, connected uh, to oxygen. But God is a healer. I thank God that during the time that I was in the hospital. Well, I went to the hospital and when I got there, I didn't uh, come back to myself till I was in ICU. And the Lord raised me back up and I thank God for that. Uh, but while I was there, they stated that they wanted me to be on oxygen. And so that's what I have. I'm on the oxygen uh, machine, but thank God that I'm alive. I'm living. Thank God for that. God bless you, Brother Jason Pekins. I appreciate Linda Ford. God bless you. Sister Angela Anderson. God bless you all uh, coming in on tonight. So I praise God. I'm, I'm not grumbling or complaining. I'm not melancholy and feeling though things shouldn't happen. I, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And as I go forth praising the Lord and magnifying him, he continues to give me the strength that I need to carry on. So many things are happening, but God is a good God. I'm standing on, on the holy side, on the righteous side. I'm standing on, standing on the winning side, and that winning side is Jesus Christ. While I was there in the hospital, uh, the saints used to say years ago when I was coming along, they would say, I felt the, the prayers of the saints. And truly, while I was there, I felt the prayers of the saints praying for me. And I thank God for you praying for me. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it haphazardly that you took out time to call my name in prayer. I'm just most appreciative of your kindness praying for me. And your prayers, prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And prayer, you, you, you can't lose when you pray. Some people who are so arrogant and so uh, carnal, they'll tell you, oh, all that praying. Yeah, we, we got to pray. 
Sometimes we have to pray to keep ourselves in check. If we weren't praying, we'd be uh, out of sorts. But thank God for the prayers of the righteous, which availeth much. So I thank God for all of you, the Lord's people, all of you, just all of you, your kindness, your consideration. Amen. God is good. Yes, yes. I know, Sister Angela, uh, Anderson, I know you know the feeling. God raised you up. So I'm appreciative to all of you. And slowly, you know, my strength is coming back. Uh, some things changed while I was uh, incapacitated. So we have to really go back, back through our uh, system and put some things back on. You know how they do. They upgrade stuff and then they wipe your stuff out. So we'll, we'll get all that done. So we'll have a better pr production for you. Now, uh, we're in the, really seems like we've been in a long time, but we're in the book of Second Samuel. And uh, just for a synopsis, it's the, it's the life of, and ministry of, of David, the service of David, as God raises him up to be king of Israel. His highlights and his lowlights. One thing about God, see, you know that the word is true because God doesn't cover up for anybody. God bless Sister Christine Markham joining us tonight. God doesn't cover up for anybody. You know, even as we see in the political climate that we have, uh, you know, but the time for voting is coming up. And I say to everybody, you vote. God has blessed you to be able to vote, especially people of color. You need to vote. I know it's between the devil and the devil's uh, uh, whatever, but just vote. Because not only are we voting for the president, we're voting for judicial, uh, for judges that's going to be over the judicial system. We're voting for Congress people who are going to represent us in Washington. We're voting for school board uh, individuals, all of that. So even if you don't want to vote, for the president, and neither one of you want to vote for. Go in and vote for the rest of them because local politics uh, will will affect you. So don't just sit back and say, well, I'm not voting. No, it's more than just for the president that you're voting for. You're voting for congressmen. You're voting for judges. You're voting for those who are going to represent you in the school board. Some of you are voting for all of them. Some of you are voting for referendums that they have uh, uh, in the uh, on the on the, uh, the, the the machine or whatever on the uh, your voting paper, all of that. So you need to go in there and vote. Don't stay at home. Go vote. You, it's early voting now. You can go vote wherever. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm not telling you how to vote for. Vote according to. God has moved on your heart. You vote, you pray over it, and you vote accordingly. All right, so don't, you do that. You do that. But I said that to say that uh, in this political climate, people try and make themselves look great. And they, they cover up all of the things that they did that were foolish or they shouldn't have done. Well, God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. God shows it all. God shows everything, every bit. Uh, when David said God didn't cover it up and uh, put it uh, away somewhere, God revealed his sin, and, and David had to repent of his sin. Uh, he had, and then he had to suffer because of his sin. Sometimes we need to understand that you can ask the Lord to forgive you, and He will. Because he's not willing any parish all come to repentance. But once you sow a seed, you're going to reap what you sow. So God does not stop the sowing from it, uh, the reaping from it, rather. He doesn't stop because you sowed that. David sowed this evilness and it came back upon him. He reaped what he sowed. So that's why it's best to stay with God and not let the devil lead you. Uh, in a way, because what you sow, you're going to reap it. Sometimes the devil leads you out here 
and, and you're using your body any kind of way. And then what happens is you get saved and come to the Lord. But look at the the, 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 the destruction that you did to your physical body because of all of what you allowed the devil to get you involved in. So it's best to stay with God, love him with all your heart and, and be real with him. All right. So now we looked at David and uh, what he had to, he said, and then we see the stages where he had to go through him reaping through his own family with Absalom who turned against him. And then God had to deal with Absalom. And so we're coming to the end, really to the end of his time. David reigned over Israel for 40 years. Saul reigned for 40 years. David reigned for 40 years. And uh, Samuel, uh, uh, Solomon, who will come after David, he reigned for 40 years also. Now we in the uh, 23rd uh, chapter of 2 Samuel, we see that God, the, the great warriors and leaders that God had raised up under David's uh, ministry. Now, if you can recall, when he ran away from uh, Saul in 1 Samuel, there were men that gathered with him who were in distress, in despair. And uh, God gave him to, to have those men follow him and they became mighty men because they followed David. God raised them up to be mighty men. And uh, if I can use that uh, as an example of what the Lord does when we follow Jesus Christ. When we, before we came to Jesus, we were in despair. We were in debt. We were discouraged. We were defeated by the devil. But when we came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he made us great warriors for the kingdom of God. So we are now warriors uh, for the kingdom of our God. We are no longer in distress, defeated, downhearted, downtrodden. But now we are warriors for the kingdom. That's why it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but why mighty through God. We're fighting the good fight of faith. Yes, I have it here. Thank you, Lord. In 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, second verse says, and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves and Cain uh, became a captain, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. So now those 400 men, uh, a portion of them, have become mighty men. All right, so that's what the Lord does for us. He takes us from, from nothing and going nowhere and makes us mighty in his kingdom, all right? Makes us mighty in his kingdom. All right, so back at 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, and I'm gonna pray, and then we're gonna go in, in, into this reading. I'm gonna read portions of the, of the chapter, but you read it for yourself. God bless you all joining in. I appreciate everybody that's joining back in. I appreciate those uh, listening to us tonight. Uh, thank God for you. Uh, may the, the blessings of the Lord uh, rest on you. We're on Facebook and we're also on uh, we're on YouTube. We're back on live and 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 uh, we praise God for that. Father, I just love you and I praise you for the victory that I have in you. I thank you for the mind to serve you and for the will to obey you. I thank you, Lord, because... You are great and greatly to be praised. I praise you for the victory that I have in you. And Lord, I ask that you would have your way as we go forth in your word, study your word, that you would bind the works of the enemy, 
that you will let your word have free course in us and with us. In the name of Jesus, have your way, God, as we go forth in your truth, because your word is true. Bless these that will listen and hear your truth. And oh, God, let it multiply. Let it grow, go forth and grow 30, 60, even 100 fold. And we'll praise you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, thank God for you. Let me know that you're listening, that you're out there, that you're part of it. All right. Uh, now, the 23rd chapter of uh, of uh, first Samuel, second Samuel. Now, it says here, now, these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, all right? He says this, the spirit of the Lord spake by me and his words word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake, spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet have he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure for this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hand. But the man that should touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear and they shall be utterly burned with the fire in the same place. Now, this is God speaking to David about leadership, what God desires. And then he's also speaking about how he did not really uh, obey God to the fullest, but God had mercy upon him to pronounce an everlasting covenant with him which he said to David that he would make his uh, rule, his authority, his kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. Now, we understand that all of these, David died, Solomon died, Rehoboam died, all of the kings died. And we also understand that uh, later on that uh, enemies came in and take over, took over uh, Jerusalem and Israel. And even now, Israel is a nation but they're not the kingdom that God spoke about. They don't control the territory and it's not peaceful over there. But through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, he is the everlasting king. He is uh, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. Through him will be uh, that will be the fulfillment of the covenant that God gave to David. Because you remember when God spoke to Abraham and we've been in the book of Genesis, like for you to come on Wednesday night, excuse me, we've been having excellent study. We've been having an excellent study on, uh, uh, somebody said I'm not on YouTube, but uh, we, we set it all up. So we'll have to check and see what's going on. So. You all bear along with us. We'll, we'll get all this stuff straight. You know, it, it's kind of, you know, you come back and kind of rusty and everything, but we'll we'll get it all together. I thought we were on YouTube, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get it all set up. We, we, uh, God will bless us to do that. Amen. God will bless us to do that. He'll bless us to do that. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so... Uh, as I go on, uh, so David, uh, 
does not have it, it will not be in his in his time but god will bring it forth it's a prophetic word that only will be fulfilled uh in the in the time and in the days of uh of jesus christ but he's also speaking about what type of leader we are to be and god said we ought to be and this doesn't just go for him it goes for everyone that's a leader everyone that's leading people uh, yeah, thank you, Brother Jason. We'll, we'll get it right next week. Everything will be set up next week. So if you all bear along with us in our folly, we'll, we'll get it all straight. Uh, he says here, he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. That goes for everyone. That goes for people in the church. That goes for people outside the church. It goes for politicians. It goes for uh, those over corporations, those that have businesses, it, it goes for uh, if you're a supervisor on, on your job or if if uh, whatever position you placed in that you have been placed over people, you must rule being just. You must rule over men. You must be just. You must be fair. You must be equitable, equitable and rule in the fear of God. Not, not man-pleasing, but God-pleasing. And we're to treat folks right. You know, some people come into positions of authority and they lose their mind. They act as if they, they uh, uh, God bless uh, Davis and Mark on, with us today. They act as though uh, they're, 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 they're the one that owns the company. Uh, you know, you, you, they act as though uh, we're, we're supposed to worship them. But no, we're supposed to be uh, humble in our hearts. We're supposed to have humility, recognizing the fact that these are people and we're going to lead them justly and fairly and rule them in the fear of God, in the reverence and respect of God, knowing that whatever we sow, we're going to reap it. See, that's we, 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 we forget that sometimes. How you treat people is what's going to come back to you. Don't fool yourself. How you treat and entreat individuals, that's going to come back to you. That's, and so uh, he said, ruling in the fear of God. So he goes on here. The dialogue goes down to the uh, seventh verse. But at starting at the eighth verse, we pick up where God speaks about these mighty men. These are the name of the mighty men who David had. So he has mighty men who followed him and, and fought with him and stood with him and submitted to his leadership. These were men. They weren't effeminate. They weren't uh, pushovers. They were men. And they submitted themselves to follow, excuse me, David, follow him. See, David was an example of them as a warrior, and he even taught them how to be in warfare. He taught them how to use slingshots. Because remember, David uh, killed uh, not only Goliath with the slingshot, he killed the bear, he killed the lion. And so he, he was uh, uh, skilled with the slingshot. So he taught these mighty men. So from the eighth chapter, eighth verse, all the way down to the 39th verse we see that uh, these men were the ones that stood with him. And I like how God calls them by their name. I'm not going to go through all of their names tonight, but he calls them by their name because that ought to show us something. And that is that the Lord knows us by our name. See, he's going to call us by our name. Now, if we're saved, and we have yielded ourselves to God and submitted to him in living a holy life, when the Lord raptures the church or uh, takes us out of the grave, he's going to call us by name. Just like he called Lazarus, he's going to call us. That's amazing. That's amazing. I don't know. I couldn't even fathom or describe how our God is uh, through Jesus Christ is going to do that, but he's going to call us by our name. He know, notice in the, in the story, he talked about 
the rich man and Lazarus. He called Lazarus by his name. He called him Lazarus. And what the angels came and gathered him and took him to Abraham's bosom. But he did not call the rich man by his name. Now, some people uh, have interjected uh, the rich man's name. But if Jesus didn't call his name, I'm going with what Jesus said. Now, you, others can die Some people have said and all that. You can make up what you want to make up. Jesus didn't call him by his name. And specifically, he did not call him by his name because, notice, the, the Lord uh, told us, those that don't reject him, he's going to say, I don't know you. I don't know you. That's what Jesus said. You're going to stand before the Father? And he said, I'm going to say, I don't know you. But those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ have given their life to the Lord. He knows us by our name. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we're not just serving him haphazardly. He knows us. He's with us. These men were with David. They supported him in every military effort. They stood with him. They stood with him when Absalom uh, came against him. They stood, they, they left uh, Jerusalem with David because they believed in his leadership. That's, they also were loyal. And we don't have that nowadays. This loyalty is a rarity. Loyalty is a rarity. It's, it, you know, it's hard today. We live in a day where people are not loyal to any. They will just jump here and there the minute something's not what they like or, or how they feel it ought to be. You know, they're, they're here, they're there, they're everywhere. They're not loyal or dedicated to anyone. These men were loyal to David. Now, from the eighth verse down to the uh, about the... Let me go down to the 23rd verse. You see, there's there's there, there's a breakdown. From the 8th to the 23rd verse, what he what David describes are men who were superior. They were above in their support. They did great exploits. Um we see it was uh Adeno. He was the one, the Bible says, he, uh, Aver says he left, lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. So this man, uh, Adeno, he slew 800 men. All right. So he, he did great exploits. Then we say Eleazar. And what he did was they defied the Philistines that were there. Uh, gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He rose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand cleaved unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him all to spoil. So notice, uh, Eleazar, who was with David, he killed, he was so so dedicated to defeating the Philistines, although he was weary, the Bible says that he, he was so, so uh, uh, focused on defeating the enemy that the sword literally claimed to his hand. He, he couldn't even take his hand off the sword and the Lord had gave him a great, great victory. All right. Then we see Shemna, or Sheba, uh, what he did was, it says he it were a piece of the ground fell full of lentils and the people fled from the Philistine. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord brought a, brought a great victory. And three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the, the cave of, well, that's another one, but I'm going to come to that. Uh this Shema, what he did was uh, the enemy had run the people away from their their uh, farming of the lentils. And what he did was he came in and wrought a great victory. He defeated 
he slew the, the Philistines and had a great victory and the people were able to come back to their land or to their field. And here we see another one. Now here's three individuals here. And three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest and unto Adullam. And the troops of the Philistines pitched in Raphim. And David was in a hole. And the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So now he's, he's fighting the Philistines. He's in the cave. He does not say he told them to do it, okay? It does not say he told them to do it. It just says that he just spoke out because Bethlehem was his his his, his birthplace. Bethlehem, where, where his family had been. They were had, had been there. He knew uh, the area of, of Bethlehem. He speaks about the well, just, you know, just to drink from the water there because he had been away so long. And what it was three mighty men that 16 verse said three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. That was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did three mighty men. Now, it doesn't even mention their names. But these three mighty men were so loyal to David and supported David so much until when he says, oh, you know, I just like to get a drink of water from the well in Bethlehem. Uh, you know, from the uh, well in Bethlehem, which is by the gate. These men went beyond uh, and broke through the Philistines' stronghold, got the water, and brought it back to David. That's a, that's a make. They, it was something he wanted. He didn't even uh, tell anyone to do it. It wasn't, oh, he said, I, I need somebody to go down and do this. You know, go down, get me some water from, because David was a tyrant. You know, he wasn't trying to uh, uh, use a rod over the men. You know, they were, he was the leader, but he worked with them. See, you can lead, you can lead people. Now, you don't come become common with folk. See, you don't run with those that you lead. Then, then they, you become common and they don't respect you. But you can lead in a way where people can respect you. You know, if you ask them to do something, you get down there and do it. Help help them do it. You know, uh, you, you they move a chair, you help move some chairs. You know, just say, oh, y'all get over there and move the chairs. You get over there and help move some chairs. Don't ask anybody to do something that you don't want to do. You know, act, you know, if, if, uh, uh, because we're working with people. People are not cattle. And yes, they're sheep, but we we would respect God's sheep. They're, 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 they're God's sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All we are are under shepherds. As a pastor, I'm an under shepherd. He is the shepherd. And they're God's people. They're not your people to rule and dominate and make them do what you want them to do. They're God's people. They belong to God. And whatever they do, it's the Lord that touches their heart. The Lord touched these three men's heart to go down to uh, Bethlehem and get go to the well and get in the enemy's territory at this time and get that water and bring it back to David. But David knew that he wasn't just going to take advantage of them. See, a leader doesn't take advantage of people. See, we've got, we're at a time now, we've got too many ungodly, perverted folks who take advantage of people. You know, it's, 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 it's a shame before God that you got uh, ungodly, perverted pastors who take advantage of the congregation. Ungodly, low lives who take advantage of, of, of the females in the congregation. You, you, God's going to deal with you. You, God is going to deal with you. You may get by, but you are not going to get away. We need, we need to understand. The Bible says, he that rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. That goes 
especially for those in the church. As I said, pastors in the church, you 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 are going to stand before God for what you teach and how you live uh, uh, in front of God's people, before God's people. And it's a serious thing. This is not a joke. You know, I've, I've often said when I became pastor, I didn't say these are my people. You know, I would hear preachers uh, say, you know, oh, well, these are my folks. I never said that. I, not, I never believed that. These are not my people. These are God's people. And God's, go, God's got something today to say about how we treat his people. You know, we're, they're not just cattle or, or sheep. And, you know, uh, just for us to, you know, you lead, you, you know, you, you, you shear the sheep. All right. And you get the wool off sheep. But if you kill the sheep, you don't have nothing. And so many times people have killed the sheep by ungodly behavior and, and all this kind of uh, mess they're going have destroyed people's lives because of their ungodliness. And then they, the people that they've destroyed, they can't go on in life because they're, they're messed up. And then they mess other people up. Hey Amen. You know, uh, the saints that come and join their church and, and Lord help me. And, and then think they're in a place where they can have peace and they got confusion. See, anytime somebody's mandate you do something, telling you you better, the Lord told me to tell you you better do something. You need to watch that. Because if the Holy Ghost haven't told you. See, what happens is there's a confirmation. For example, uh, many times I preach the word and people have come to me and said, you know what? God spoke to me, was talking to me about that. Or God was saying this to me about that. That's a confirmation of what the Holy Ghost was saying to you. It ought to be confirmation. See, we ought to have the Holy Ghost enough to have discernment, to know when people are trying to take advantage of folks. And so, you know, uh, oh Lord, I, I went another direction. So David wasn't taking advantage of the kindness of these men. Yes, we're not focused on God's work. We focus on what we want out of. That's what we want. What we want. See, we're building kingdoms of ourselves. You know, kingdoms to ourselves. This is the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be building God's kingdom in the hearts and minds of men and women so that they can go forth and win others to the to the kingdom. Not building our own kingdom so we can be great. The only great one is Jesus. He's the great. It doesn't matter your title. You can be bishop. You know, everybody wants to be a bishop now. You know, they even leave the reformation so they can be a bishop. So what if you're a bishop? You can be a bishop and don't know God. You can be a superintendent and don't know God. You can be a pastor and don't know God. You can be the Pope and don't know God. What did, what did it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall he give in exchange for his soul? We, the, uh, God told Ezekiel, he said, all souls are mine. There it is. All souls belong to God. So we better be careful how we treat the souls that belong to God. We ought to treat them justly and in the fear of God. So so David, uh, I, I know I'm going a little tangent off, but it, it's, it's, we're in a serious state. We, people have been messed up by these demons. And I did say David is dead. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, cut my uh, words. Demons, devils sitting around, messing over children, messing over folks in the church. And call themselves the leader. And then, Lord, you you help me, Lord. But these so-called leaders who find out about it won't even take them down. Won't even go in there and say, listen, you've been sleeping with this woman and that woman. And we got evidence about it. So you're no longer over this. No, they let them keep on going because they're giving a lot of money. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm telling you right, and I'm not backing off of what I said. You can send it to whoever you want to send it to. It's right anyhow. But anyway, David didn't take advantage of these, these men's kindness. He poured it out before the Lord. He poured it out. It was a, he made it a drink offering to the Lord. 
because it was the Lord that touched these men's heart to go in to dangerous territory, to the enemy's territory, just to get some water for David. And so they were they were considered mighty men. And then Abisha, uh, he was a mighty man. He said that he lifted up his spear, I mean, 18 verse, his spear against 300 and slew them and had the name among three. So he killed 300 men. And ben Nanai, ben Nanai, uh he was a son of a valiant man. Uh, he slew two lion-like men in Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of the pit in time of snow. He slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. So it shows he was a mighty man. Uh, so ben, ben and I, he was named among the mighty men. So now notice, it's, it's bro broken into uh, categories. They are all mighty men, but th these category of men did great exploits, all right? But just because the rest, as you when you will read down, Azahel and uh, Shammai and Hazel and Abizar and Heleb and uh, all of these, as you read down, they may not have done the great exploit of the others, but yet they're in the number. See, the Lord said that. The Lord said that, you know, there may be some, you may not be uh, a great preacher, but you're serving the Lord and you're obeying God and you're telling, you know, talking to people about the Lord and praying for them and praying that the Lord, you know, will have his way dedicated to what you're doing. Your name may not be as big as that person's name, but you're in the number. Isn't that wonderful? You're in the number. You're serving the Lord. Your name is right there. You know, your name, you may not be a uh, bishop. G. E. Patterson. You may not be able to preach like Bishop G. E. Patterson. Bishop G. E. Patterson was the prince of preachers, and God, it was you. Could, you could no doubt have woke him up at at uh, three in the morning, and he could preach a message. He was anointed. God anointed him. He had the word in him that God would give him revelation of the word, and he would preach. But however, everybody's not a Bishop G. E. Patterson. But whatever you know. Some he gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. You may have one talent, but use that talent for the Lord. And you, you're in the number of the people of the Lord, serving the Lord, obeying the Lord, trusting the Lord, depending on the Lord. You're in the number. Amen? So don't worry about other folks. Don't worry about their names being great. Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, in ministry, sometimes you look at other people people and how they're doing and all of that. You just do what God's given you to do. Whatever God has placed in your hand, you do the best with it so that you can be named among the mighty that are serving the Lord. And I want to point out this also. We're going to, I'm going to get ready to pull this in. But in the 39th verse, it says this, Uriah the Hittite and all of the, all together says 37 in all. Even though David had Uriah killed, Uriah was a mighty man. Now, what did I say about mighty men? They were loyal. They were were they were dedicated. They were supportive. God had brought them. Some of them, as I said before, had had started with David when he uh, had gone and uh, ran ran away from. Uh, Saul, and I showed you back in 1 Samuel where they were distressed, discontented, and in debt, and they joined, 400 men joined David. Some of them joined him as he went through his various battles and, and all of that. But we see uh, we see Uriah the Hittite. Now, who was Uriah the Hittite? Uriah the Hittite was who? Was uh, uh, Bathsheba's 
husband. So this, this, see, this is what I mean by when we, when, when a person gets their mind off of leading justly in the fear of God, then the enemy gets uh, in your mind to make you feel like you can do whatever you want to whoever you want to. When David sinned with Bathsheba, which he knew he was to be stoned to death by the law, by the Levitical law, because first of all, God has said, uh, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery in the Ten Commandments. And then as you go into the law, in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, God breaks it down even more because he knows that man's heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And man will say, well, you didn't say I wasn't supposed to do that. So God breaks it down even more. But he had committed adultery with Bathsheba. So by right, he should have been stoned to death. He had Bathsheba should have been stoned to death. Even though he was Cain, he should have been stoned to death. All right. So to cover up his, his transgression, what does he do? He tries to bring you right back to for your ride right to have a sexual relationship with his wife so that it could be said that it, you know, how that's, that's sneaky and low down. As, and I'll tell you, some pastors have just got that same spirit. Some pastors got that same spirit, same spirit. But anyway, I digress. So, uh, uh, so he manipulates and tries to get Uriah, but Uriah is so loyal and dedicated, not only to David, but the men who he's fighting with, that he wouldn't even go into the house with his wife. And so finally, he arranges for day for uh, Uriah to be taken to the uh, worst part of the battle that men were getting slaughtered, and he arranged for him to get to be uh, killed or murdered. Now, but notice he's named among the mighty men. See, he's named them. It doesn't matter. God knows you by your name. It doesn't matter how people pull that mess and that junk to try and kill you, to try and destroy you. God knows you by your name. God knows you by your name. So, so you know, it doesn't. People can do their ungodliness and 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 treachery and deceitfulness. But God knows you by your name. Notice the last person he named was Uriah the Hittite, which he he was a mighty man. He know he didn't do the great exploits that these other men did the, the, in the first part of it, but he's numbered among the mighty men. All of them together, numbered. So don't worry about what other people are. Do do what God has called you to do. You be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. God has called you on an assignment. God has said for you to do this. Then you do it. Don't, don't look for other people. You know, Even if other people don't join you in doing it, you go forth and do what God has called you to do. Be faithful unto death. That's what uh, Paul told Timothy. Be thou faithful unto death. And, and God's going to give you a crown of life. Be faithful to God, faithful to his word. When you're faithful to God, you'll be faithful to the church that you're a part of. You'll be faithful to the leadership because if that leadership is led of God, they're not going to ask you to do what is not pleasing with God. They're not going to ask you to have you do his things that God is not pleased with. They're not going to be telling you. You know, we, we now, as I said before, uh, you got all these cultic leaders. You got so it was one person I was uh, saw him on YouTube and he's telling folks that, you know, don't do nothing for the poor. God didn't tell us to do anything for the poor. He is a liar from from uh, I, I'm going to say from hell. He's a he's a liar. He's of his father, the devil. I say it like that. Because God always considered the poor. Jesus was poor. He, he was rich in heaven and he became poor for us. To show he was poor, they didn't even have a lamb to offer as a sacrifice on the eighth day that they came to the temple. They only had a dove. The dove was the cheapest offering that God had given to Israel to give. Jesus was poor. 
He said, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was poor. When they, they wanted the taxes, he told Simon Peter, go look in the fish's mouth. And in the fish's mouth was enough to take care of the taxes for he and those who were old enough by which they had to pay taxes for. So anybody who goes around, see, is people who are so full of the devil and full of themselves, and they don't study the word in order the word to search their heart. They, they're greedy dogs that don't get enough and trying to just manipulate people and make giving the church and, and, and pastors and leaders a bad name and, and talking all this foolishness. Yes, Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. That's true. We will have the poor. There's always, always going to be people who are poor and who need. And I'm not saying that, you know, you know, just go out here doing all. You you help those that need help. There's always people trying to manipulate you and try and have you doing something that they can do for themselves. Yes, the Bible says that we're to work with our own hands. If a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. But sometimes there's a lot of people out here that they're the working poor. They're working and they still don't have enough to get by. And they're not running out here just acting just the acts. We'd always consider the poor. All through the the Psalms, the Psalmist speaks about considering the poor. The uh, uh, that that he that give it to the poor lendeth to the Lord. You know, I, and I'm like, how could you call yourself a pastor and love God and let that ungodly perversion come out of your mouth? And God's gonna deal with you for it. Don't fool yourself. God's, God's going to deal with uh, whoever teaches that ungodly mess. God's going to deal with you. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm about finished. All right. Because we live in this people, uh, you know, we, we live in this time where where people don't have mercy on people. And, I, and I'm again, I'm saying, I'm not saying, listen to me now. Listen to me. If a person is able and can get employment, then they get employment and then it work. But even uh, for years, for for a number of years, our church uh, uh, partnered with PADS. PADS was Public Action to Deliver Shelter. And so what the, the, the program that they had was they would use churches as a site for a night. Uh, so individuals who didn't have a, who were homeless would stay in the church. So our basement more or less became a, a homeless shelter that night. It would be Monday night. And so we would have people who didn't have a shelter. They would come in and they stay. Many of the, uh, a bright, a quite, quite amount of those people, they were working poor. They get up in the morning, take their lunch, and then they, they would fix a lunch for them, fix breakfast first, give them a lunch, and they would go to work. But they didn't have enough money for a place to stay or whatever. But they were working. They were working on a job, and they weren't spending their money on drugs and and all of this gambling. They were working poor. All right. And so there's systems, there's a way to find out if a person is legitimate. I'm not saying you don't have systems in which to see if this person is legitimately uh, in need or they're just trying to manipulate uh, individuals and, and try and play on people's feelings. Uh, that's, there's a difference. But however, you don't tell folks that God never, you know, uh, uh you don't have to help the poor, and God didn't God didn't say to help the poor. That's not biblical. Search the scriptures because in them you you think you have eternal life, and people need to search the scriptures. Amen. I I'm, I know I said that. However, we see Uriah here is the last name listed in the twenty uh, third chapter here. And uh, you can also find in First Chronicles eleven ten through forty seven, all of the names again are reiterated in First Chronicles, uh, the tenth chapter, the uh, First Chronicles the eleventh chapter, ten through forty seven. Now, uh, in the twenty fourth chapter, I'm gonna uh, pick that up, and that'll be the last chapter. Although it doesn't 
uh, give us the end of David's life in that 24th chapter because you have to go back into First Kings and deal with the fact that he becomes old, stricken in his in his health, and then he has to play someone to be king, and then he uh, goes, uh, he passes away. We'll deal with all that uh, as we go forth. If the Lord so blesses us uh, to be here again together with you. Uh, again, I thank God for you taking out of your time to join us on tonight. As I said, we're kind of, you know, uh, getting back into uh, position. Uh, and also there's been various things that they changed on us uh, uh, through the system. They, they upgraded some things. And when they upgraded it, they want you to buy more packages and all of that. So we have to go through and see what, you know, will be uh, what we can use or whatever. So we're working on all of this. And, uh, you know, I thank God that the Lord has blessed me. You know, God is good. And he blessed me. I thank God for those, as again, who prayed for me. I thank God for my children who were there for me. I appreciate every one of them who were there for me to help me. You know, um, it was just, I'm just grateful to God. You know, uh, God is good. I thank God for uh, raising me up and then giving me strength. You know, for at one time, they, uh, the doctor didn't want me to, to drive, but now he, he he released me to drive, and I've been driving and going forth and all of that. And uh, as you see, I have to deal with this oxygen, but I'm just believing God for that. You know, when I was in the hospital, when I was taken to the hospital, my oxygen level was uh, in the gotten down into the 60s, and that's 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 they say that's bad. That's a bad situation. Get down in the sixties, and so uh, you know the Lord. They, they brought me back, and my oxygen level is up. It's now between you know I did uh, checked it today and had a doctor's appointment uh, the other day. And my oxygen level was in the, in the nineties, ninety eight. Thank God. So the Lord is good. You know they they've spoken certain things about me, but I'm just believing God. I'm, I'm going by faith in God, and then I'm changing things, changing things, getting back to exercising even more and, you know, just eliminating things. One thing I'm learning how, by the grace of God, to eliminate a lot of stressful things and stressful people. There's some people that all they want to do is stress your life. Uh, they have an anointing to stress your life. You know, it's like, it's like they want to stress you or cause something to happen to you, but God is good. Leaving it, eliminating myself from stress as from stressful people. And God is good. So I praise God for Jesus. Now, I do want to say that Sunday is the Lord's Day. And we want you to come join us. Uh, I know it's pastor's appreciation, but not, just not for that. Come and be blessed to the Lord. Come and let the Lord do something for you. We have a great man of God that's going to be with us. Uh, he's Pastor Robert Tyson. He's from Chicago, Illinois. He's a preacher personified. He loves God, loves the word. A man of God. Uh, I've known him for years. And he has a life that, that speaks of his ministry. And he's going to be with us Sunday. Uh, so we start service at 1045. Now, Sunday school starts at 930. We want all of you Bible scholars and folks who want to learn the word. Come on and join us in Sunday school at 930. Come on and be with us at 9.30. If you, you know the Bible, then we need you in Sunday school. If you don't know the Bible, then you need to be in Sunday school. Come on and learn. If you don't know uh, the books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you need to be in Sunday school. You need to be in somebody's Sunday school. Amen. So, well, we, we want you to be here. But come on and be a part of, of what the Lord is doing uh, here at Greater St. James. And that's Sunday morning. Now, uh, Saturday, there's prayer at 7 a.m. The saints join in prayer at 7 a.m. On, on Saturday morning, 7 a.m. We have prayer on Tuesdays and Fridays. That's at noon. 
the saints are praying at noon. It's not a long, drawn-out thing. It's just coming in, praying, and going forth. Amen. Years ago, the saints had noonday prayer at the church. Well, we're making it convenient for you that you can just go online. And again, like I said, we'll have all that information uh, for you. Again, you know, as I said, when I came back to all of this, they had cleared a lot of things off of our system because they're upgrading stuff. But uh, should the Lord bless, we'll be back uh, in gear uh, next next time. But uh, again, I thank God for you. So, And also, you can give. There's ways that you can give. We need the saints to give. The only way that the church can be supported is as, as the believers give. And when we give and support the work, God is able to do what he needs to do in terms of ministering to others, in terms of the physical upkeep of the church and all of these things. This, our giving, helps support it. We believe in God's system. I don't care how people have tried to manipulate God's system and try and uh, undermine God's system. God's system of giving is tithing and offering. So we love for you to give us unto the Lord. Amen. And he will bless you bountifully. So again, I thank God for you. Every prayer that you pray, every song that you say, say thank God for you. Thank God for you. May the blessings of the Lord uh, rest upon you on tonight. Be blessed.